Welcome back to our channel and our topic for today is all about native architecture in the Philippines and colonial churches in the Philippines. Architecture in the Philippines today is the result of a natural growth enriched with the absorption of varied influences. It developed from the pre-colonial influences of our neighboring Malay brother continuing on to the Spanish colonial period and to the American Commonwealth period. The pre-colonial architecture in the Philippines. The, the pre-colonial architecture of the Philippines consisted of Nipa hut made from natural materials. A great variety of Nipa hut exists in the Philippines. The Bahay Kubo Nipa Hut is a typical traditional house found in the most lowlands all over the Philippines. Originally built as one room dwelling. The Nipa Hut changed as family needs become more diverse. This is the example of a Nipa Hut, the Philippine icon of house. Modern urban dwellings, on the other hand, are typically two-story structures with a concrete ground floor. This is architecture in the Philippines during the Spanish period. One of these is the Fort Santiago. Fort Santiago or Cuerza de Santiago is a defense fortress built for Spanish conquistador Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. The port is part of the structure of the walled city of Intramuros in Manila in the Philippines. The location of Fort Santiago was also one of the site of the palace and kingdom of Raja Suleiman, chieftain of Manila of pre-Spanish era. It was destroyed by conquistadores upon arriving in 1570, encountering several bloody battles with the Muslims and native Tagalogs. The Spaniards destroyed the native settlements and erected this Fuerza de Santiago or Fort Santiago. The Intramuros Intramuros, located along the southern bank of the Pasig River, was built by the Spaniards in the 16th century. Literally within the walls is the meaning of Intramuros. So here is the design of the Intramuros, another fortress in Manila. The Rizal House in Calamba, Laguna, Vigan, Ilocosor, as well as Taal, Batangas have the best surviving Spanish quarters. This is the Rizal House preserved in Calamba, Laguna. During 300 years of Spanish colonization in the Philippines, architecture was dominated by Spanish culture during this period. In Tramoros, the walled city of Manila was built with its walls, houses, churches, and fortresses. The Augustinian friars built a large number of grand churches all over the Philippine islands during this period. Traditional Filipino Baha'i na bato styled for the large mansion emerged. These were large houses built of stone and wood combining Filipino, Spanish, and Chinese style elements. The best preserved example of these houses can be found in Vigan, Ilocosur, and Taal, also in Batangas. The Bahay na Bato, the, colon the colonial Filipino house, is a mixture of native Filipino, Spanish, and Chinese influences. In Vigan, Ilocosur, excellently preserved example of the houses of the noble Filipinos that can be ad admired. In Taal, Batangas, the main street is still lined with examples of traditional Filipino homes. So these are the house in Vigan until today it is being preserved and used. These are called Vigan houses in history books. The heritage houses 
intaal. The best example ex- existing today still exists this heritage house in Taal. Colonial churches, Philippine colonial churches are unique in their own sense. Some of the best preserved colonial churches in the country are found in Ilocos regions, as well as those in the provinces of Laguna, the Batangas, and as well as the Visayan island of Panay, Cebu, and Bohol. There are colonial churches in the Philippines. This one is the Baraswine Church. The Philippine colonial churches are unique in their own sense. Some, some of the best preserved colonial churches in the country are found in Ilocos regions, as well as in Laguna, Batangas, and in Panay, Cebu, and Bohol. Here are some best examples of well-preserved colonial churches that still stand today. Dr. Jose Rizal was baptized in this church on June 22, 1861 by Father Rufino Colantes during World War II. The fleeing Japanese soldier herded Calamba's residence inside the church and then burned it down what became known as the Calamba Massacre. That was so horrible. The church was rebuilt after the war. It's still on colonial churches in the Philippines. The Cathedral of San Pedro and San Pablo was started to be constructed in 1761. It is the biggest colonial church to be built by the Spanish in Cagayan and became pattern of what is called the main Cagayan style. Binundo's Basilica of San Lorenzo Ruiz was first built sometime in 18th century and it was damaged during the British invasion in 1762. Repaired and improved damage again during 1863. So this is the Binundo's Basilica of San Lorenzo Ruiz. Baruch churches in the Philippines refers to four Spanish-era churches in the Philippines designated by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1993. The Baruch churches have been at the forefront of Philippine history since their construction in 1500s. During the time of Spanish colonial rule, the church and the state work in hand globe. They had served the Catholic Church in the archipelago and as the political backbone of Spanish colonial rule. The unique design of the churches reflects the integration of Spanish and Latin and American architecture to indigenous architecture of the Philippines, including fusion of Chinese styles. The Baroque churches of the Philippines had been designed similar to the Spanish churches in America. They had the appearance of a fortress Spain sought to protect itself from native people who had killed Ferdinand Magellan and from the Muslim in the south. The formidable appearance outside the church, building side, the remarkable beauty and spirituality inside. This is the interior of a Baroque church using arch and rebolting, similar of that of the Gothic. Four most prominent Baroque churches in the Philippines, number one, Church of San Agustin in Manila, Church of La Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion in Santa Maria Ilucosor, Number 3, Church of San Agustin in Pauay, Ilocos Norte. At number 4, Church of Santo Tomas de Villanueva in Miagao, Iloilo. The Church of San Agustin, Manila. This is how it looks until today. It is preserved. The Order of St. Agustin built the Church of San Agustin located inside the historic wall 
City of Intramuros in Manila. Completed in uh, 1607, the Church San Agustin constitutes the oldest church, that's oldest church building in the Philippines. Features of San Agustin Church. Just look at the entrance door made from hardwood carved sturdy. Oh, that's a very sturdy entrance plank door. The Church of La Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion in Santa Maria Ilocosor mark a departure of traditional Spanish church's building. Rather than sitting town, the church in Central Plaza, the Agustinian Mission choose to build the church and convento on a hill. A formidable defensive wall surrounds the structure, the builders taking cues from photography of the hill. So this is it. Another Baroque churches, the La Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion in Santa Maria Ilocos. The Church of Pauay, this is one of the most famous church in the Philippines, located in Ilocos Norte. The first church was built in 1731 near the Tomagbuk River, three years before the arrival of the first Spanish priest. Moro pirates burned this in 1741, and another one was built in 1746. This was again looted and burned by the marauding pirates, and another one was built in 1787, this time on top of the hill called Takas. So this is the Pauay Church. The Church of Santo Tomas de Villanueva in Miagao, Iloilo. Still preserved until today. The Miagao Church built in 1786 by Spanish Agustinian missionaries had been declared also as part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is a Baroque church of the Philippines in 1993. And that's it for today, folks. And don't go away. Questions will be coming up in a short while. Class, here are the questions for you to answer on a piece of uh, bond paper and of course send your answered paper into our Google Classroom via email hand it in okay so number one question what makes Filipino architecture global and unique okay your answer number two what was committed to believe that architecture built in the Philippines should reflect its culture and people so who is this architect, a Filipino architect, who believe, believe that architecture built in the Philippines should reflect its cultural or culture and people? Next question, what is the traditional Filipino dwelling? What materials can you build it with? Is the design of this structural sensible? Okay, that's a very long question. How Philippine architecture evolved through the years? Who is the famous architect in the Philippines? Does architecture help the society? What is the largest ethnic group in the Philippines? What is Bahay Kubo? Represent in the values of a native Filipino. What is the traditional Filipino dwelling and what materials are used to build, to build it? Why are there no partition for rooms in Bahay Kubo? How does architecture affect the environment? How does architecture affect human behavior? That's all for today, folks. Please answer it. And don't forget to subscribe and make comment for your comments on our YouTube channel will be your attendance. Thank you so much. See ya.